Hey, what's going on everybody? Max here with BB and today for 10 Minutes Max, we are going to be doing a little breakdown on why I am so bullish here from a technical perspective. We're going to cover most of the majors, you know, we'll cover USDTD, Bitcoin, ETH, Total, um, and if we have time, we'll get into some meme coins as well. Do me a solid guys, before we dive into the charts, please like and also subscribe. We are growing so quickly, and it is all thanks to your guys' consistent support of what we are building here at BB. Let's dive into it. We're looking at USDTD, all right? We're going to do a real quick bit of analysis on this because, truthfully, guys, th this chart is, in my opinion, the most important chart in crypto. Um, most people don't even really look at it or know what it is, but um, this chart is extremely important. So, we're going to start by drawing a quick channel and then we're going to move on from this and we'll go, uh, you know, go, we'll go into some specific coins and, and stuff like that. Um, but I think it's really important to set the stage appropriately here. Um, all right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start by drawing this channel right here. All right. And there's, you know, a few different ways you could draw this. Okay. But what I would like to show is, for one, for those that are not familiar with it, what this is, and two, um, you know, what basically is going to happen next. So this goes all the way back. This is on the ultra high time frame. This goes all the way back to 2019, all right? So what we're going to do here quickly is we're going to mark out, you know, every time we've been at this low, we'll mark it in red, and then we're also going to overlay it with, you know, some crypto prices as well. You know, and this, we hit it a few times here. You don't need me to do it more than once. But uh, now we're going to mark out the top of this channel. All right, we'll put that in green. Um, just throw that on there. It's kind of like a little deviation. Marked it there. Marked it there. Okay. And then something significant happened over here. And we actually had a breakdown of a five-year channel. All right. So now what we're going to do, and, and actually let me just make this all green just for USDTD. All right, here we go. And now I'm going to put Bitcoin down below and we'll make it look pretty. And then we're going to get into some of the specifics with Bitcoin right after this. But I wanted to just show this chart to start because one, I think it's extremely significant. Um, and two, you know, this, this chart is cooked and I'm going to explain what that means. Now, we're going to put these same dots that I have drawn right here uh, for USDTD. We're going to put this on the Bitcoin chart as well, okay? And by the way, you can see there's clean interaction with, like, the mid-range and stuff, too. This is a really, really clean channel. And again, this goes back to 2019. You know, this, this is a long channel. So let's start marking out the uh, let's start marking out the red dots, all right? As you can see, this is where the red dot was over here in 2019. We'll mark out this one as well, which was the high in June of 2019. And then I don't know if you want me to mark three, right? You can see that, you know, it was basically just kind of this whole distribution right here. We were grinding against it. Then the all time high 69K. And now we're going to mark out the green dots. Okay. So here's the low. It corresponds to this high on the channel. And then here's the COVID low, which corresponds to, you know, this high or this high on the channel. And then this level right here, you know, Bitcoin dropped, um, you know, and then this level right here was the summer, uh, summer 2021 before the run up to the all time high. And then, of course, you know, we had this prominent low right here for Bitcoin lined up with the top of this channel. And then, of course, the FTX collapse also was to the top of this channel. All right. And then something significant happened over here where we actually broke down out of this five year channel right here. So we'll put this dot in blue to signify a shift of trend. Um, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to actually manipulate the chart a little bit to uh, just make it, you know, make it look a little bit prettier. Hopefully, you know, get a get a clearer view here. Um, all right. Here's your channel. Here's Bitcoin. So now you can see pretty clearly like how this channel has called tops and bottoms for USDTD, right? Like very, very clear tops and bottoms. It called, you know, this drop. And again, the channel hadn't really formed yet. But either way, when we popped off of this, this channel when it was forming, Bitcoin dropped, top of the channel called the bottom. And again, then this channel right here called 2019 top. It called the COVID COVID crash bottom, it called this drop right before the bull market, you know, again, perfectly. 
um, again, right here called the perfect summer lows before the run up to 69K. It's called every major top. So again, this channel is extremely significant, right? Like this cannot be overstated the significance of it. And even more significantly, we broke down from it recently over here in January uh, of this year, January 2024, okay? So additionally, on top of that, you can trade this thing, you know, just like any any chart, right? It doesn't it doesn't make a difference. And I'll just make this box gray. This chart, you know, I mean, this is some very, very obvious. Within this channel, we've got clear resistance. Then you flipped it here, tried to hold it here, lost it, rejection here. This chart looks cooked, in my opinion. Like, this thing looks awful. If we were just looking at this and this was like altcoin USD, you would never be looking to long like this. Like, this is not a real, like, you wouldn't be looking for this. This thing looks terrible. Like, it looks like we broke down out of this channel. You've also got this gray box, you know, serious multi-year resistance. And for those that just need to need another reminder here, there's a very clear negative correlation, right? You can see very obviously right here, you know, when Bitcoin goes up like this, USDTD is doing the opposite. And, and the assumption here for those that are unfamiliar is this is Tether dominance. So it's what percentage of crypto Tether represents. So when Tether is losing dominance, and right now it's at, you know, four and a half percent, when Tether is losing dominance, what that means is that Tether or, you know, crypto's equivalent of cash is being deployed into assets like Bitcoin or ETH or, you know, whatever, right? So this chart looks completely cooked. So what am I expecting from here? I mean, generally, I'm, I'm expecting this, like this little, we're kind of like bear flagging right here. I'm fully expecting this to, you know, break down like this, which, you know, will in turn send Bitcoin straight up in a straight line. You know, and that's that's ultimately what I'm expecting. The level that I, I think is really interesting would be somewhere around here, um, which would be just under three percent. So you know, two and a half, two point six percent. Obviously, we've got some. You know, these levels right here are very, very significant. Um, you know, we had a little deviation here. Perhaps you want to consider it that, but you can see, you know, how many interactions we had with this level right here. So I am targeting somewhere around two point six percent but potentially for USDTD, which, you know, should really send Bitcoin and crypto significantly higher. Okay. Just to be clear, like it should send it significantly higher, like 150, 200 K Bitcoin, something like that. Um, you know, because again, just look at the, look at the correlation, right? So I'm looking for this gray box somewhere around here. All right. You know, 2.5%, hopefully, but let's take a look at Bitcoin here and we'll talk about um, you know, just on the higher time frames, like where we where we are, like this is this will just serve as a, in my opinion, a, a solid refresher for everybody. I think that people sometimes forget and they suffer from recency bias on, you know, where where we potentially are um, in this cycle. All right. Where we potentially are. So looking at Bitcoin right here, guys, I mean, people seem to have forgotten that we just had a Bitcoin having. OK, like we just had a Bitcoin having. And it's, it's not, you know, it's not uncommon right after a Bitcoin having to just see, you know, a few weeks, even a few months potentially of just kind of chop and low and whatever before ultimately we go significantly higher, right? Here we go up again, kind of just chopped, actually pulled back a little here in 2016, went up like crazy, chop, you know, annoying, ranging, whatever, after the third Bitcoin having, and then we had last cycle. And again, we're, you know, we're somewhere in here, right? So contextually, you know, you have the backdrop of the Bitcoin having as well as, as an additional point of confluence, um, you know, for basically the, the previous USDTD chart that we were just talking about. So, you know, I think a lot of people are just, you know, they seem to have kind of forgotten, which, which is fine, right? But I think it's pertinent to zoom out and recognize like, you know, you're, you're somewhere in, in one of these regions, right? Like looking at the previous two cycles, like you're, you're, you're somewhere in here. You're somewhere in, you know, here. July, August, September, October, you know, somewhere in here, right? The the best is just around the corner, right? The, and, and just to do a little time-based study, right? Just going from the second Bitcoin halving to the, uh, you know, at that point, then global top, it was 525 days roughly from the second Bitcoin halving to when it put in a top. Now let's take a look at the third one. You know, all-time high over here. 546 days. So 
you know, the previous two cycles, if the same thing happens, which I'm not expecting the exact same thing to happen, but, you know, even if it was half of that, let's say hypothetically, right? From the Bitcoin halving, assume maybe you get a couple hundred days. That would take you out to the end of this year, right? So to assume that, you know, we had a Bitcoin halving and USDT dominance looks cooked and we're also in a Fed pause window, which is very bullish for risk and stocks are holding structural uptrends. Everything looks great. Um, to assume that for whatever reason, we're going to have an aggressive sell-off, um, you know, and not continue upward would be very atypical of, of where we're at. Okay, it'd be very, very atypical. So um, I think that things look, I mean, they, they look fantastic, right? And and let's, let's just do this as well. Let's um, Let's throw up ETH down below. Because, you know, there's been a lot of debate about, you know, how's ETH going to perform this cycle? It's kind of lagging as of right now. Um, you know, and, and to that, I say, you know, ETH is doing what ETH has has always done at this phase of the cycle. So, you know, let's take this up here. We're actually going to mark out the Ethereum previous cycle all-time highs. All right. We will take a look at where Ethereum is roughly at. And we could do, you know, we can even do this. That's, this was kind of weird because ETH was like, we won't put as much weight in this one just because ETH was such a baby. Um, but let's move this up now and let's take a look at where Ethereum has been at, you know, when Bitcoin has been right around here for this phase of the cycle. All right, so we'll put Bitcoin in orange. We got Bitcoin up top. We got ETH down below. We got the Bitcoin halvings down below as well. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark out Bitcoin's previous all-time high breaks as well. All right, there's one, there's two, and then this cycle would be three. All right, so let's take a look at what happens every time Bitcoin is kind of you know stuck right under the previous cycle all-time high, okay? So as you can see right here in 2017, Bitcoin was chopping, ranging under the previous cycle all-time high. And then once it finally broke through, you know, ETH went crazy, right? And ETH went up from, at this point, 20 bucks all the way up to, you know, 1,000. Bitcoin only went from, you know, let's just say 2,000 up to, to you know, 20,000, okay? So, or, you know, a little less than that. It was like 13, 1,400 up to 20,000. So still great returns, but ETH went up significantly more. All right, now let's move forward to the last cycle and take a look at what ETH did and where ETH was, where ETH was in its cycle compared to where Bitcoin was in its cycle, All right? So here's Bitcoin, last cycle, previous cycle, all-time high was right here. So as Bitcoin was chopping under the previous cycle, all-time high, Look at where ETH was, right? And we can even, you know, zoom in and we'll show where we're at in this cycle just to show some additional similarities. Um, when Bitcoin was under the previous cycle all-time high, look at ETH was still significantly off of its previous cycle all-time high. And I can make this a little bit thicker um, just so we can see the uh, the previous cycle all-time highs very, very clearly. Right here, Bitcoin under the previous cycle all-time high, ETH lagging, but then from this point forward, once Bitcoin finally broke through, ETH went up significantly more. ETH went up from, at this point, you know, 500 bucks almost to 5,000, where Bitcoin went from, you know, about 20K up to about 70K, right? So Bitcoin went up 250, 300%, where ETH went up like eight and a half, nine X. All right, so from when Bitcoin finally decides to break through the previous cycle all-time high with, with Gusto, that's when ETH goes crazy. So where are we at right now? You know, very comparably, and, I, and I'll make these a little bit more, a little bit more clear here. What are we seeing? You know, we're seeing something very, very similar. Once again, Bitcoin right around the halving, you know, chopping under the previous cycle all-time high, in my opinion, about to break through. And as you can see, ETH is still significantly below, and not significantly, but below its previous all-time high of, you know, just under 5K, right? So same type of thing is happening where ETH has been lagging Bitcoin a little bit during this phase of the cycle. But once Bitcoin finally decides to take this next leg up, which in my opinion is going to be starting very, very soon, that is when you start to see dramatic Ethereum outperformance. So we are on the verge of that. And what does that imply for all of your altcoins, right? Like, let, let's take a look here at, at something like Pepe, right? 
So Pepe has been extremely strong. And, and real quick, this is, in my opinion, where, where Pepe's at, okay? Like, if we want to try to compare it to Doge, this is this is Pepe right now. This is Doge in the previous cycle. Um, I think that this is the best comparison out there. We're, we're stuck right under the 1.618 locally here, but not for long. And in my opinion, this next leg up happens sooner rather than later. And obviously, Pepe is on Ethereum, so you know you get that you know you get that pronounced Bitcoin break through the previous you know the the, the previous all time high. Oops, not right there, right here. You get that that pronounced break through the previous all time high. Same as last cycle, ETH starts to outperform, and then you know from that from that point forward, um, you know you can expect a rotation into you know strong ETH beta stuff like Pepe, right? And then we can go further down the derivatives line, um, you know, for for other things that are you know Pepe derivatives, right? So Pepe is an ETH derivative, and then we got plenty of other you know derivatives of Pepe that are going to do tremendously well. So um, you know, then you start to see a, a clear rotation into strong Ethereum beta like a Pepe, right? And just to give you an example of what I'm talking about here, you know, this this right here is is Pepe ETH, okay? So what is this chart? This is Pepe valued against Ethereum, okay, or denominated in ETH. So what does that mean? That means that if this chart is moving down, then ETH is a better hold than Pepe. If it's moving up, Pepe is a better hold than ETH, right? So you want to swap your ETH into Pepe when it's trending up hard. What do we notice right here? We've got a Fib extension set right on here. I'll make these. Uh, I'll make the fonts a little bigger so you can see them. We got our range high. We got our range low. Perfectly drawn, right? There we go. From the the, the all time high on this pair, the Pepe ETH pair, to the low. What do we notice here? One point six one eight Fib extension. Oh, look at this. Very interesting to see. We flip it, came back, deviated below, perfect hold and retest. So this is lining up perfectly for another Pepe moonshot, right? Where Bitcoin breaks through the previous cycle, all time high with conviction. That triggers Ethereum outperformance. Ethereum outperformance is going to trickle down into strong ETH beta like Pepe. Um, and then, of course, ETH is the, the, you know, it's the rising tide that lifts all ships, right? And in this instance, so would something like Pepe. Right. And if you want your, you know, your smaller altcoins to do well, then you're going to want Pepe to do well. And if you're going to want Pepe to do well, then you need ETH to do well. And for ETH to do well, you need Bitcoin chatting above, ripping above the previous cycle all time high, which in my opinion is right around the corner. We've been very patient sooner rather than later. But anyways, guys, I'm, I'm extremely bullish right now. Like I, I, I couldn't be much more bullish. I'm, I know it's been, you know, pe people have, You've had to be patient, right? We've been ranging here, consolidating, reestablishing value, you know, chopping up here at the at the previous all time high for, you know, a significant period of time. Um, but in my opinion, we are like right here, guys. Like this is, let me just, you know, we'll just we'll just show it again. Like this is, I don't even need ETH down here. That's that's fine. Um, we'll remove these drawings. Still need them right now. I mean, this is like. The, the, the cliche expression of like the longer the base, the higher into space, like this is so damn bullish here. We've been ranging and consolidating here. You know, Bitcoin has been for three months now from the high. If we want to go from like, you know, the low when we first entered this range, it's been a hundred days, over a hundred days. This is a very, very clear, you know, clear and clean range. Um, you know, I would probably draw it some like, you know, in my opinion, this, we would go, we just do this, right? Very, very clean range. Um, we got a little deviation. Funny enough, this was actually the last, uh, the last FOMC, but you know, this is, this is incredible, right? So I'm telling you right now, like when you break out, when you break out of this range, you know, I'm not expecting a quick deviation. And if you did, you know, that it would be bearish or we're going to go back down here. I'm not expecting that. Like when you break out of when you break out of a 100 day reaccumulation, which by the way is literally at the previous cycle all time high. Here, here's last cycle's all time high. All right, here's last cycle's all time high. It's it's the line that's going right through it. All right, I'll I'll make it uh I'll make it a little bit more obvious here. We'll make it we'll make it blue, and uh, we'll make it a little bit thicker.
This is the previous all-time high. I'll even label it for you guys. Previous cycle, all-time high, and we'll make this blue to match it, okay? When you spend 100 days, especially right after a Bitcoin halving, reaccumulating, reestablishing value, building a base at the previous cycle, all-time high, this thing is a launch pad, guys. Like, it's not going to be a quick little, like, well, you know, there's like 77K, haha, <laughs> like, okay, that was fun. No, 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 like, what's going to happen when you break out of this is you're going to rip. Like, you're, you're going to do this, retest, and then you're going to go like this, okay? Then you're going to go like this. The example that we've talked about before on our live show market check is basically, you know, something in the equity markets sort of serving as a precursor for the uh, the Bitcoin price action, Okay. And in my opinion, it's going to be something like, it's going to be something like NVIDIA. It's going to be something um, like this. So this was the uh, the NVIDIA previous cycle all time here. I'll just copy paste this so we can, we can keep it. We can keep it right here. Here was the previous all time, previous all time high for NVIDIA before it's bear market. Okay. In my opinion, and this is obviously a little bit higher, but it doesn't really matter. Point being is like, this is this is kind of what you could expect, something like this, okay? When, when you get that range break like this, okay, look at look at what happens here, okay? Th this is what happens. And NVIDIA, similarly to Bitcoin, when it marked up here, you know, it spent 200 days, depending on where you want to measure, right? We could start it from the high, we could start it from here. I don't really know where you want to measure it, but point being is it spent you know, 100 plus days, almost 200 days, depending on where you want to measure it, ranging before it just it just rocketed up, right? So for Bitcoin being more reflexive than something like NVIDIA, you know, we've already been here for 105 days. I think you're getting to the end of the road. So, you know, maybe another week, maybe another two weeks, potentially, I don't know. But point being is, this is what happens when you see a break of value, um, when you've reestablished and reaccumulated at the pre you know, at or above the previous cycle all time high on an in demand ticker, you don't see a little break, you see a rocket. Okay. So that's generally what I'm expecting is, is like, it's not going to be slow guys. It's going to be quick. Right. So you, you want to own beta, you want to put your foot down. Like you, you want to make some money. Like this is the time, you know, when Bitcoin finally gets above and breaks out of this range it's go time undoubtedly it's go time so just shared some of my thoughts you know do whatever you guys want to do but you know like that's i'm not here to, to hedge my opinions right if i'm right i'm right if i'm wrong i'm wrong but um i think i'm right in this case and i'm certainly positioned precisely how uh how you think i am all right thanks so much for being here this was 10 minutes max brought to you by bb definitely went over as i normally do but that's okay it's kind of a meme at this point before you guys go, please do me a solid. Please like and subscribe and also check out the links below. The first link in the description below take you to our website where you can sign up for our premium Discord. Right now, what you could expect is over two and a half hours per day of private live voice calls with me and the entire Because Bitcoin team and community. We do Q&A, we share active positions, TA, premium setups, things that we don't talk about here on YouTube. And again, we do two calls per day where we get to chat constantly, right? You basically get 24 seven access. You get to see behind the curtain, everything. And as an additional bonus, within the next 30 days, you're gonna get free access to our new flagship product called the BB Terminal, guys. Basically a Bloomberg terminal, but for crypto, it's got everything that you're gonna to need to succeed in these markets. It's absolutely epic. It's got portfolio tracking, derivatives data, heat maps, high time frame DCA indicators, literally everything that you could need or want to succeed in these markets bundled into one super website. So sign up for the Discord sooner rather than later, and you will get the BB Terminal for free within the next month. Last but not least, check out the second link in the description below. That will take you to the BB Academy, guys. If you want to speed run your educational journey towards understanding and navigating these markets, guys, there is no better product on the market than the BB Academy. We spent six months meticulously curating and crafting everything in this academy, guys. It's got everything that you, you could need or want you need to know to succeed in these markets, guys. So support BB, support your educational journey, guys. It's got everything that you need. Again, there's there's a lot of people out there teaching TA. Um, some of it's good, but there's also a lot of the wrong information, right? So we can save you a lot of time and a lot of money learning the right information here directly from uh, 
directly from the horse's mouth, directly from BB. So it's all of our tips, all of our tricks, all of our secrets, things that we use to successfully navigate these markets. So guys, check that out. Before you guys go, just a reminder, please like it, subscribe, check out the links in the description that I just told you all about. We'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you.